Comics are an endlessly fascinating medium. Growing over the years now, comics have become something that pretty much everyone in the world is in some way familiar with. From manga in Japan to DC and Marvel in the West, comics were for a time almost synonymous with entertainment. Lately though, there have been some incredible developments in the media, with the work done in shows like Arcane and the ever-developing animation industry, and even with the improvements made to comics by artists like Yuzuke Murata, books as a storytelling medium had opened room for change. And it's happening already. Around 2.7 billion of the world's population own a smartphone, and a large majority of them have access to the internet. More than anything, the internet is a presence in everyone's minds. When we consider the creative space on the internet, it has existed almost since the inception of it. Back even before YouTube, Newgrounds and Tumblr were a wellspring for comics. But over time, content would move further and further away from the traditional comic format, both because of the attention span and the readers were dwindling, and the rapid growth of media to replace comics overshadowed the comic book industry. Seeing the state of the industry decline in the early 2000s, after the Korean economic collapse, John Q. Kim created Webtoons. Created in 2004, it was initially a relatively unknown platform, a platform that would have a massive surge in popularity thanks to one thing. Webtoons were comics meant to be read on smartphones. Webtoons did something that webcomics before them lacked. They had the quality of professional comics and they got around the issue of the printed page limitations the same way TikTok and Instagram got around it. Scrolling. And it would change comics forever. To better illustrate what I mean, Webtoons scrolls downwards. It is a vertical, continuous page of a comic. And I'm showing you here an example of a Webtoon that I'm working on currently. And there are very creative ways of using this uh, format. And you can even draw horizontally on it. And because the format makes it scroll vertically, your reader will still be able to gather what's going on in a scene, which makes for some incredible things that are just not possible with the traditional horizontal medium, even if you are very creative with it. It's a whole world of possibility that isn't available for anything other than this specific medium. I'm already a little bit far in, but I thought it would be cool to show you guys how I illustrate one of my webtoon pages. This is from uh, currently, as of recording, this unpublished webtoon called A Story That Floats. This is from one of the earlier chapters or episodes, as they're called in the webtoon site. I initially made this as a manga, which is why you will see that I grab elements, visual elements, drawings from a horizontal format and adopt it to the new format. Um, the thing with webtoons is it's 800 wide by 1,280 tall. It, that's one segment of a webtoon. But because it scrolls downwards, for a reader, the experience is that it's a continuous page. The higher end sponsored original webtoons, which are made by the creators who are sponsored by webtoon and paid by webtoon as employees, they usually have a panel count of around 40 panels per episode. An episode is essentially what you would consider a chapter in a manga or a comic format. And you can space this out and pace it in any way you want to. But uh, for publishers who are publishing it on their free platform, which is called Webtoon Canvas, 
it is generally 40 or below panels per week or per month. That is entirely up to the publisher. That is entirely up to the author or the illustrator of the comic. For me, I have the content already for a lot of the narrative because I, like I said, this is based off of a manga that I did earlier. And this is pretty much the refined final version of that story. And because of that, I don't have to illustrate as much as I would have to if I were making a story from scratch, because I already have the character design and I have the narrative based out. The uh, biggest struggle with adopting this new format, especially if you're more familiar with uh, the traditional format, in case you're watching this video to uh, understand what Webtoons is and how we can publish on it. There are a ton of other videos I would like to recommend that other people have made who are actual authors on Webtoons in order to make it easy for people to adopt to this new format. And uh, for me, I think the easiest thing was to just trial and iterate, like a lot of things in art. I usually just, whatever I have to draw, I usually sketch out as I would normally. and. Then I do occasionally a layer of line art. And if it's like a background, I don't really do the line art. And I illustrate it as I would on a normal comic panel. But what you have to keep in mind is that it is scrolling downwards. So you can't really use uh, the traditional hierarchy of a manga or a comic when it comes to paneling it. And paneling it is incredibly important. I shall make a video eventually on paneling because there are some really incredible examples of paneling. Um, uh, as for now, briefly, paneling in Webtoons is a bit tricky, so I'll explain it in a different way. is a traditional comic panel. You have the colored things which are panels and the spaces between them which are the gutters and the white space that covers everything is the page border. Here are two pages from two popular shonen manga. One is from Haikyuu, the other is from Chainsaw Man. And as you can see the authors have played with the panel borders and the gutters and the, the page structure itself to convey motion, impact, overlap, emotion, text elements. But all of these are still confined to a horizontal flip the page layout. Even manga like Chainsaw Man, which have incredible panels and One Punch Man, which break these rules almost every day, still have to confine themselves to this flip the page layout. This is not the case with Webtoons. The vertical continuous page allows webtoons to do creative things far beyond the medium of traditional comics. Because the page is continuous, you can make drawings that travel through entire swaths of the canvas at a time. You can create incredible fight scenes in manhwa like solo leveling where the fight scenes spread almost entire chapters sometimes are incredible to witness because that is a thing that is impossible to do in any other medium. Another fun thing about Webtoons is although it hasn't been that long, the platform has grown in incredible ways and it keeps growing every single year. They do events and very thought out functions to the app structure. One of my favorite ones that sadly only Webtoon Originals creators can use is the incorporation of music inside the comic. This is actually a thing I've been thinking about for a long time. Why aren't music tracks used more efficiently in the comic medium? I'm sure that you wondered if how cool a manga action scene would sound or how cool a somber moment in a shoujo manga would seem if it was complemented with music. Well, with webtoons, 
you can actually experience that. Because a lot of the original Webtoon series have specifically tracks made for the more emotionally hard-hitting or the suspenseful or the final season climaxes of the series. On top of this, Webtoon also does some incredible work in using very new technologies and incorporating them inside their comics. Every year for Halloween, they used to do this AR thing where the ghosts would jump at you. It scared me to half to death the first time I saw it, but that is also a really good testament to the amount of potential this medium has. Now that I've sold everyone sufficiently on the idea of Webtoons, let's look at how a person can just publish a comic on it. Perhaps the best thing about Webtoons is that it does have a free option for anybody really to publish their own comics on it. And it they make it incredibly easy while they do have a lot of tutorials on how to do this that are far more like very accessible also on YouTube. I, I'm, I'm doing this this is really redundant what i'm doing but i'm still gonna do it because i think more people should make webtoons and more people should get into it um so the way you basically do this is you go to the webtoon canvas site you sign up with your account and then you are prompted to create your series and they give you guidelines all the way along and all you really need is a somewhat structured plan of action they recommend having three episodes ready before you publish which is what i'm doing right now as you can see and then it's pretty much just a game of consistently uploading your comic you can determine your own schedule and see how it grows and the nicest thing about Webtoons is it is almost always a win-win situation because even if your comic isn't necessarily successful commercially or in terms of viewership, your art is guaranteed to improve when you do a comic. So you're not really losing anything if you commit to making a Webtoon. And overall, I just find it incredibly exciting to even have platforms like this to be able to tell stories like this. And if you're anything like me, I know you would love the opportunity to. I've waited.